Sutherland Township uh, Zoning Board, or I'm sorry, it's the trustees meeting. Uh, please stand for the national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen, Lord. Thank you for coming out. It is uh, August the 26th, 2021. Um, if you have a cell phone, please silence your cell phone. If you need to take a call, you can slip out the doors left or right. We appreciate that very, very much. Um, before we get started, um, the trustees have uh, something that they want to uh, announce or uh, something they'd like to read uh, on behalf of the New Michelin Township Board of Trustees. And Don, if you would be so kind as to do that, I'd appreciate it. I will do that. I have a statement to release and it's been prepared for us by our legal counsel. Recent events have brought light to the need to emphasize distinct and separate nature of the office of the township trust or fiscal officer held by Todd Bosley. The fiscal officer serves as separate and independently elected public official, apart from the trustees who comprise the board of trustees. The position of fiscal officer is provided for in revised code section 507.01, where board members um, of the trustees are addressed in revised code 505.01. Because the fiscal officer is separately elected official, the fiscal office is not an employee of the Board of Trustees and not subject to the board supervision or management. Instead, the office of the fiscal officer is said to be on the same plane as the offices held by the members of the Board of Trustees. This was uh, written by Ohio Attorney General, opinion number 86-057. Given this status, it is further recognized that the fiscal officer is responsible only to the people of the township. Precisely because the fiscal officer is independent from the Board of Trustees, the board is generally without any authority to regulate the duties of the fiscal officer, including his ordinary day-to-day -day activities. This is also from the Attorney General opinion number 86-057. This gives the fiscal officer considerable discretion so long as statutory duties imposed on the office are performed in compliance with Ohio law. One of the statutory duties placed on the fiscal officer Bosley is the requirement that he shall keep an accurate record of proceedings of the Board of Trustees at all of its meetings. That is from Ohio Revised Code 507.04. During his attendance at the board meetings, Mr. Bosley routinely uses his personal phone to make video recordings of the meetings. While these video recordings are well within uh, the prerogative of the fiscal officer, the board has not authorized the fiscal officer to, to treat or consider the recordings of a formal journal of the board's proceedings. Under Ohio law, it is the Board of Trustees to determine its own rules and order of business and to keep a journal of its proceedings. Mr. Bozzi may, however, use his recordings as his own form of personal notes for his preparation of written minutes, which become part of the Board recordings of proceedings. During, a re during recess at a board meeting held August 12, 2021, Fiscal Officer Bosley used his personal phone to invade upon and record the personal conversations of members of the public in attendance of that meeting. Mr. Bosley then posted such recordings to the internet and provided his own characterization of his recording. The description provided by the Fiscal Officer was not only inaccurate and misleading, but it also a gross distortion of the events which occurred during the public meeting and of the words exchanged in private conversation. While I described above, the board has no direct authority to supervise a fiscal officer and has no means to curtail such conduct you, deemed inappropriate by the board. Fiscal Officer Bosley is directly responsible to the people of the residents of New Michelin Township for his actions. Accordingly, this, the people have the right to know that the fiscal officer's recent actions do not reflect any position or actions of the board of trustees. 
Well, we are not endorsed or condemned by the members of the board and are highly, or, or excuse me, and are hereby publicly rejected. Going forward, Fiscal Officer Boz is urged to provide and report whether formally or informally, only true and accurate information for the public steaming from the meetings of the Board of Trustees. All right, thank you very much. Uh, on the fire, Rich. Uh, first item is a resolution to approve Travis Barton as a firefighter EMT candidate to allow for the scheduling of a firefighter pre employment position. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Voting? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. George? Yes. John? Yes. Uh, resolution number two is a resolution to approve the 2021 emergency dispatching contract with Tri Division Ambulance District in the amount of $2,610 per month. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Voting? Jennifer? Yes. George? Yes. Don? Yes. Uh, third item is a resolution to approve the contract to install a door access control system at station number one from Abbott Fire and Security of Canton, Ohio in the amount of $4,967. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Voting? Jennifer? Yes. George? Yes. So that, yes. So that's out of that insurance claim that they're back. And I sent you guys both. We got two prices. Yep. And yeah. And they were uh, $100 difference. <clears throat> uh, and the last is a resolution to approve the June 2021 and July 2021 fire reports. We had a total of 81 emergency incidents in June and 117 Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Voting? Jennifer? Yes. George? Yes. Don? Yes. All right, thanks, Rich. Uh, Road, Jamie? First, the resolution to approve the August 26, 2021 road report. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Voting? Jennifer? Yes. George? Yes. Don? Yes, sir. I was over at East Road over at the Culvert replacement. It's, uh, it's coming together a little well. Yeah. I say we should, hopefully, with the weather. Um, you guys will beat the uh, deadline by should be able to. It looks pretty good, so yeah. everything's looking pretty good. I'm glad it's, I'm glad the county jumps in with them. Yeah, that, that was a nice. help. Yeah, that was nice. Okay, thanks, Jamie. <coughs> uh, thank you very much, Jamie. Uh, fiscal Officer Todd. Yep, Todd Bosley, Nimbusville Township Fiscal Officer, and the first resolution approve refund to Jennifer Leone in the amount of thirty nine dollars and forty cents for certified mailing. She did on 7-29-21 and 8-23-2021. Motion to second. Motion to second. Voting? Yes. George? Yes. Don? Yes. Number two, approve refund to George Kiko for the purchase of a new title copy in the amount of $16 uh, to or cost to mail title with uh, UPS in the amount of eleven seventy five for a total of twenty seven seventy five. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Voting? Yes. George? Yes. Don. Yes. Number three, approve payment to Huntington Bank for service charges in July in the amount of 185.30. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Voting? Jennifer? Yes. George? Yes. Don. Yes. And number four, approve minutes for the August 12, 2021 trustee meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Voting? Jennifer? Yes. George? Yes. Don. Yes. I sent all of you a copy of the Board of Elections language. Does anybody? Everybody approve it? Okay, I'm gonna sign it and send it in. Then I just have one last thing that I wanna say. The credit card policy is currently being reviewed by a Star County prosecutor. Upon review of the auditor state bulletin and in conversation with the state auditor, I realized there's some things that I believe are missing. Uh, one of those issues is the sales tax, how we deal with that. Um, if an employee were to buy something, they obviously have to buy it from a company they were already tax, tax exempt with. So the state of Ohio says paying sales tax for a township is a, a gross missed expenditure. They have some big language for it. Um, so I'll have an answer for you on that as soon as the prosecutor gets back to me. And I did want to inform the board that I've asked the Stark County prosecutor for representation uh, because of the actions of this board. And I have, I have some questions and some problems. So I'm awaiting their response on that. Okay. Thank you. Concerns of the citizens signed up, we have, is it Sue? Yep. Jar Jardis? Jardine. I'm sorry, Jardine. I'm George. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to come up to the mic? I want that camera off. I don't want to end up on YouTube. And it's my right to never shut off, Todd. Shut it off. 
I'm not certain the doc from my lab to record a meeting. That's the high rise code. Don't put me on YouTube because I won't come in here. Nice. Okay, I just came. I want to thank George because you come down today. I called, but Jeff for the last two and a half years has worked with us to get that house at 6043 Paris torn down. <clears throat> George knows, Jeff knows, if nobody else knows, you could put a 55 gallon drum through the front of the roof and through the back, you could have driven a Volkswagen bus. And there was garbage and crap. And finally, after two and a half years, you guys were able to get this taken care of. But I want everybody to know how hard Jeff worked on this. Yeah. He has been with me the whole way, so. And I want to say what a good job, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Jim, uh, Brad, Rick, read it. Read it. I'm sorry. I, I plan to come to the, the zoning meeting, but I just a quick question. Do I really have to worry about them putting the Dollar General in my front yard at Petiti's Garden Center? That meeting, that is September the 9th. September 9th. Yeah. yeah. yeah that'll, that'll, be our, that'll be our next meeting when that comes up. Yeah, there's, there's, three Dollar Generals within three miles of my house. So I, really? I mean, it's re residential? To, I'll be back at the back yeah. 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 I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. And Ron, Salisbury. Ron Salisbury, 45, 61 East Wind Avenue. Uh, right there's a prime example of what comes to a business or the residence, you don't count. They're going to build whether they whatever they want to build. But I have a question. I had a friend on my street who had a tractor trailer. Parked it in his driveway. Then was Sillon Township board, not this, and told him, it ain't a business area. It's not zoned for heavy equipment. It ain't zoned to work out of a business. They made him move it. So why the devil's standard down here on Broadway? I believe he's up for the zoning appeals next meeting. He's coming in to get a variance. Well, are you going to allow a variance in a residential area next to neighbors for him I'm to run not, that? The, it's up to the appeals board. The appeals board. It's not zoning up to appeals us. board. They listen to that. You're talking about the mulch. Yeah, I'm talking mulch. about a, a, right. a tree service. Yeah. Is there any came in earlier this week? I mean, why are you yeah, allowing yeah, that? The, the, the person that had to track the trailer had to go rent a garage in Louisville. Mm -hmm. He had to go rent a garage. They didn't do a variance so he could work out of his house and destroy the neighbor's property. He said, so why this double standard? Why is this happening? It's a process getting some of that through. You know, it's you know that truck, that a tractor trailer isn't a normal ride to work. Mm -hmm. You drive to it. That's not a normal mode of transportation to work because you drive it to work, you drive it to the job. So you're going to destroy them houses around there. They won't be worth nothing. People can't sell them, people won't buy them. So why are you allowing this to happen? We're working on it. It's you shouldn't allow it at all. You don't zone one house from around the neighbors so he can run a business. It's a residential neighborhood. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. I'm tired of a double standard. We've got a resolution book we've got to follow. I hope everybody understands that. Right. We're not going to follow, we've got to throw it in the trash. What's that? That's what we're following, the code. we got a code, a resolution I book. I have to follow a code. I'm not going to go after one person real hard and then, you know, and then the next time not do it. We're going through the process. He There's shouldn't be allowed to open a business next to neighbors. Well, we had somebody come up and said something about a business, and they should have reported it to the Board of Appeals because that's where it should have went, not here. Because that's we process. We have to go through that. We just don't make stuff up. All right, up Jeff, you're up. Uh, your uh, resolution is up. Okay. Resolution 1, approve the August 26, 2021 zoning report. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Voting. Jennifer? Yes. George? Yes. Don? Yes. Okay, open bids for the demolition of 9055 Columbus Road, Lewis Ball, Ohio, 44641. I believe we received three. 
Yeah. Well, we have a chat with this one. <laughs> I think we should accept this. Okay. Um, Jennifer, you can go Okay. First one is Wreck It Rich LLC, 6214 Sloniger Drive, Louisville, Ohio, 44641. Total bid is $19,700. Yep, I have a proposal bid from Estes Wrecking Company, 3525 Broadway Avenue, Northeast Louisville, Ohio, 44641. It is uh, for the Columbus Road Demolition Project of $26,500. I have a bid from Easton Construction Incorporated, PO Box 2718, North Canton, Ohio, 44720, uh, for the total price of $23,500. 23500 So we want to award the bid? Yeah, we need to, right? we got to keep that process moving along. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Okay, I motion to approve a resolution. Awarding the bid to Wreck It Rich LLC in the amount of $19,700. So moved. I have a motion and a second. So I'm voting. Yep. Yes. 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 Congratulations. Uh, discussion regarding COVID 19. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to, I got a call from a township citizen asking about watched the video and said that she saw people in a meeting without mask on. I did get a hold of the health department. There's no mandates for it right now. And they said, that we don't know what's coming up. So it's kind of like they're not enforcing anything. They just have their uh, suggestions of what to follow, but there's nothing on, the, on their books of any type of mandates. So I just want to make everybody aware of that. Yeah, you're welcome to wear a mask in the meeting if you want or without if you want. Um, but as of right now, there's no mandates, and uh, I appreciate you looking into that. Uh, also, discussion on Violin the sinkhole update. Yeah, so we've got uh, one bid in. We've got two in process to uh, take a look at that. Uh, hopefully, by the end of next week, I have something. We'll be able to get something for next meeting uh, to approve. So okay. that's that's in process. But they've got filled out. There's a road plate on it, so it's safe for the neighbors. There's no issue okay. whatsoever. Okay. Jamie did a good job. Okay. All right. All right. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to second. Voting? Yes. George? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Have a safe trip. Who gets these ones? Alicia goes to Q.